Let's use the color balance RGB module in Darktable to do some split toning. I'm going to explain to you how it works and how you can use it and what color palettes are. Let's start. And here we have the image that we're going to work with. Well, it's going to be the first image because in this video I've got three images because I want to show you some different results. Right. First, let me show you a before and after. This is the original image, and this is the image that we're going to create from it. So that looks very, very cool. And if we go to the second image, which is this one, I will show you a before and after. So on the right side is the before, and here we have the after. Guess in the comment section which color scheme I have used right here. And now let me show you the third one which is this image, and let me show you a before and after. So here's the before, and now if I move this around, here's the after. I'm going to show you in this video how to do that. So let's start with the first image, and I've already made a duplicate, which means that my original image is still intact, uh, and I kind of start from scratch. And as the title suggests, I am going to use the color balance RGB module. Now I am going to change some in, wait a minute, in the master settings. I won't go in detail about what I'm going to do right here or why I've been doing it. Uh, I'll make a separate video on that because that way I can explain to you what everything does. And I just know that these are the values because I've memorized them, which I'm obviously kidding because I've wrote these down. So there you go. This is how I change the image very quickly, but it's all about the colors right here. And when you're going to do some split toning or some color balance or whatever you want to call it, there's a couple of ways how you can do this. And to show you, I need this example right here. So right now we have an analogous color scheme. So we've got colors which are in the same spectrum. So let's say what Google says, and it says an analogous color scheme involves three colors that are positioned next to each other on the color wheel, as it's shown right here. While neutrals can be added in as well, two of the shades involved will be a primary color, red, blue, and yellow, for those who need a refresher, and the third will be a mix of the two. So we've got these greens, and we've got the blues in this one, or the pink, the red, and the orange, or the orange, a little bit of orange, and then the yellow. Now, another thing which is very popular is the complementary color scheme, which is the orange and teal. So let's see what Google says. What are complementary colors? They are pairs of colors which, when combined or mixed, cancel each other out by producing a grayscale color like white or black. When placed next to each other, they create the strongest contrast for those two colors. Complementary colors may also be called opposite colors. And this is the key, opposite colors, which means that we need a color which is on the opposite of the other color. So if I drag this to the reds, you see we've got the greens. If I drag this into the blue, you see it's the yellow. And this is a very popular formula for sports teams to use in, let's say, their tenues or their t-shirts or their sweaters or their club colors because it really stands out. Now another thing I want to show you are shades. So you can have different shades of colors, there you go, which are all in the same spectrum. So if you're going to color grade an image, this is what you should look at. So we've got an analogous, we've got the monochromatic, which is a different one. Then we've got the complementary. So make sure that if you're using colors or a color scheme in your image, while using these, that will give you the best result. So back to Darktable. And right now I want to warm this image up and I'm going to use the same U in the highlights as I'm going to use in the shadows. So first let's do some minor changes. I'm going to globally offset the image by just a little bit. And I want to crush the shadows a little bit as well to give it more contrast. You see, I can lift the shadows, I can crush them. And in this case, I just want to bring them down just a little bit so that we get a little bit more contrast in the image. And I want to increase the highlights a little bit because the image was a little bit dark. And you can change the overall power as well. If you ever want to know what a slider does, just move it to the right, move it to the left, or read the manual. But in this case, I'm going to bring it to here. So now let's work on the colors. And I want to change the color of the shadow because I want to warmen it up. So I want to bring it into the orange a little bit. There you go. 
And I'm just going to increase the saturation by just a little bit to warm everything up. I think this looks great. And I'm going to do the same thing for the highlights. So I'm going to use the same value. So I'm just going to do this manually because that's a lot easier than moving the slider around precisely. I'm going to increase the saturation or the chroma of that as well, but not too much because this is a very strong effect. So I'm just going to ever gently, very slightly increase it a little bit. Now let me show you before and after. So here's a before and here's an after and the image looks a lot more warm than it did before and gives it a lot more life. Now that's using the same type of colors. I'm going to do the same thing for the road. So here's the road after I've edited it. So let's go to the duplicate one to start from scratch. And immediately when I look at this image, I see that it's curved somehow. So first I want to add the lens correction to make sure that everything is normal as it should be. And then we're jumping back to the color balance RGB one. I'm going to go to the master tab. I'm going to set some settings to make it a little less dull. And now I'm going back to the four ways because this is where I'm going to address the colors in this image. Now, in this image, I want to change something as well. I want to darken the shadows just a little bit to give it a little bit more contrast. But look what I'm going to do to the highlight area. So the highlights gain, I'm not going to increase it, but instead I'm going to drop it all the way down to bring this back. This image was shot on a Sony A7R 3 which has a lot of megapixels. It's got a high dynamic range, so that's why I can get back all of these details in the sky. And I'm going to decrease the power a little bit as well because this was shot early morning, I assume. And now let's move on to the colors. Once again, I want to warm this up again. So I'm going to use the same values as I did with the previous image because somehow that works here as well. Now all I need to do is I need to increase the chroma to make sure that the colors are actually added to the image. And there you go. And let's see a before and after. So here's a before and here's an after. And personally, I think that looks a lot better because it really brings the image to life. Now, the final thing I want to do is I want to show a completely different image in which we're going to color grade this split toning style with an orange and teal. It's the most popular one. Everybody knows it. I made some videos about it before, but not with this module. So I'm going to do that right now. And in this case, because I already like how this image looks, I'm going straight to the color balance RGB module. I'm going to activate it. And I'm going to decrease the luminance. And I'm going to darken the shadows again because uh, I like the way how that brings contrast to the image. And I'm going to increase the highlights by just a little bit, not too much. I'm not going to move everything around very drastically. And I'm going to bring down the power as well, just a little bit. And now it's time to work on the color. So we've got the orange skin tones. We've got some blues already in the shadows, but I'm going to increase that. So in this case, orange and teal, uh, as I've shown you on the color wheel of color.adobe.com, orange and teal means that this is how it's supposed to look. So I'm going to look for these colors in the hue bar. I'm going to look for these colors in the hue bar. So for the shadows, that means I want it to be somewhere around here, looking at the blues. And I'm just going to increase the chroma to add those into the shadows. And I'm going to find the orange color here in the hue bar of the highlights. There you go. And I'm going to increase the chroma here as well. Not too much because that looks very, very weird. So just a little bit to make it very subtle. Now let me show you a before and after. So here's a before, here's an after. I can't say anything more about it. Let me know in the comment section down below how you like this. So once again, before, after, and that was it. And that's it. I hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to see more of me, please subscribe. My name is Rico Richardson. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. Doei.